In our upcoming class, we will discuss Jerry's Ceramics versus the Consumer Product Safety Commission, a case decided in the Fourth Circuit. The CPSC has determined that tens of thousands of hazardous toys are being imported into the United States. The Federal Hazardous Substances Act authorizes the CPSC to regulate hazardous substances, defined as any toy or other article intended for use by children which the Commission by regulation determines in accordance with APA Section 553 to present an electrical, mechanical, or thermal hazard. The CPSC, through notice and comment rulemaking, promulgated a rule to define when a toy might pose a choking hazard to infants. The rule described a test that would determine whether a toy might fit within an infant's airway. The test involved a testing device, a cylindrical cup of about the same size as a baby's throat. Babies instinctively stick things in their mouths, as parents quickly learn. A baby can choke on things that can get into its airway. It is hazardous to leave an infant alone to play with toys it can choke on. But parents cannot keep continuous watch over their babies, and babies tend to get fussy if they don't have something to suck on or play with. Many toys are made up of parts, and parts of toys are a choking hazard, too. The CPSC's small parts rule stated as follows. Any components or pieces, excluding paper, fabric, yarn, fuzz, elastic, and string, which have become detached from the article as a result of the use and abuse testing, shall be placed into the cylinder one at a time. If any such components or pieces fit entirely within the cylinder, in any orientation and without being compressed, the article fails to comply with the test procedure. The language in controversy in the case is this provision. Any components or pieces excluding paper, fabric, yarn, fuzz, elastic, and string. Here's how a cylinder test would go. Here's a My Little Pony toy. It is packaged with a plastic brush for grooming the pony's mane and tail. But is it too hazardous to market infants under the small parts rule? Let's see. Uh, the part fits entirely into the test cylinder without forcing. The pink pony fails the test. The CPSC will not allow it to be marketed to infants. How about this pony? This pony does not come packaged with a brush. And it does not fit into the test cylinder, even if we tried to force it in. So does the purple pony pass? We don't know until we've done the use and abuse test. If the toy comes apart, we have to test each part separately. Suppose that after use and abuse testing, the purple pony loses part of its tail. The section of the tail fits entirely within the test cylinder without being forced. Does the purple pony fail? Any components of pieces excluding paper, fabric, yarn, fuzz, elastic, and string. Remember that under the small parts rule, fabric that becomes detached does not disqualify the toy, even if it does fit into the test cylinder. The reason for excluding bits of fabric from the test was that too many toys would be disallowed. Think of teddy bear. After use and abuse testing, teddy bear is surely going to shed some fuzz. The CPSC does not want to be the Grinch who stole Christmas. Purple Pony gets a pass. Let's try another toy. Parents know how hard it is to get kids to eat their vegetables. Maybe a soft, cuddly toy vegetable could prepare baby for the transition from baby food to solid food. This toy carrot could be just the thing. And look! It does not fit into the test cylinder. But could it still be a choking hazard? We have to put the carrot through its use and abuse test. What happens? Suppose the green part detaches from the orange part. 
and fits entirely within the test cylinder. Is that a fail or a pass? Pretty obviously, the greens could get into a baby's throat and cause choking. But the green, greens are made of fabric, just like the rest of the toy. Are the green carrot, c carrots excluded from the test? testing, though, just like Teddy Bear's fuzz and Purple Pony's tail? Or should they be included, like Pink Pony's brush? You should pause this video now and come back after you've reread Jerry, the Jerry Ceramics opinion. Pause now. Welcome back. The CPSC realized it was important to clear this up. Toys made of fabric components are sold all over. And they seem to be as hazardous as Pink Pony. The agency action challenged in Jerry's Ceramics is this so-called interpretive statement published in the Federal Register. The exclusion of detached pieces of paper, fabric, yarn, fuzz, elastic, and string from the provisions of the small parts rule does not apply to components that become detached in use and abuse testing. The key point is that detached pieces are excluded, but detached components are not. The carrot greens that pulled away from the carrot toy look more like a component than a piece, and so the carrot toy would fail the test under this interpretation if that was not already clear. The CPSC did not publish a notice of proposed rulemaking, and there was no comment period. The interpretive statement did, however, include this. Enforcement of the small parts rule under this interpretation shall be stayed until November 23, 1989. The effective date of the interpretive statement was six months after the date of publication. The CPSC was nice enough to add that the interpretation could be challenged in any enforcement action after that date. But the plaintiffs sought pre-enforcement review, and the Fourth Circuit set aside the interpretive statement as procedurally invalid. It held that the interpretive statement was not an interpretive rule accepted from APA Section 553 Notice and Comment Procedures. For our classroom exercise, we make believe that the U.S. Supreme Court has granted certiorari to review this case. Let's have fun with it. <laughs> 